Super Rugby squads are out for round number six, folks. Let's go through the ins and outs. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how these squads may be going to go. Not been the most predictable of seasons thus far, and no better example than the Crusaders. Winless thus far from five rounds. They'll be looking to turn things around. The squad is pretty stable. Drummond's back in. Captain's decided at nine this week. Johnny McNick will also get in the start after being on the bench last week. Um, Dallas McLeod joins him in the starting lineup. A bunch of changes on the bench with the return of Owen Franks and Dom Gardner. And James Mullen will get his debut from the bench. But yeah, Vivez Rehan are also a bit of a boost with his injury return. But yeah, it's been tough times. Tough times down at Christchurch. And the visiting side of the Chiefs flying pretty high barring their one loss it's been a pretty good start to the season Tokiaho also returns for them so that's a bit of good news uh, also Josh Jacob maybe the biggest bit of news for the Chiefs lineup this week with uh, DMAC on All Blacks rest top point scorer in the competition Josh Jacob I think it's his first ever super rugby start so pretty big shoes to fill for him especially down in Christchurch we'll see how he goes he's got some experience around him like ALB is back into the 23 this week as well so some good guys to kind of guide him on his way. Second game of the Friday games is the Waratahs and Rebels. That's an all Aussie affair. Waratahs squad's pretty stable. Some tinkering with the kind of bench and starting guys. Hannigan drops to the bench. Swinton starts. But biggest news is the return of Will Harrison from injury and Lalakai Fuketi from injury. Fuketi had a pretty serious, scary injury a while back. I think, was it in training or was it on the field? But he's back in the 23 on the bench. That's a bit of good news for the Tars. For the Rebels, they've had a few more changes. There's no Callaway this week, but Dalgunu is back into the 23. They've got uh, Josh Kimini, tackle machine uh, at number seven. So he's back into the 23. And then Darby Lancaster, who's a sevens guy, uh, getting his Super Rugby debut on the left wing. But I mean, the most exciting thing for me is those two props, Elof and Tupo, to come off the bench. Proper, proper, big hitting, ball carrying props. So very exciting as far as props go. 6-2 split for the Rebels. First of the Saturday game sees the Drua taking on the Force. Uh, the Drua have also kept things pretty stable, but there's no Dera Nalangi this week. It's Tadekai Vata who comes in at number 8, and Momo gets a start on the left wing after he was on the bench last week. There's no spot for the kind of drop goal hero, Valatini, who, as I said, came off the bench and won the game for them last week against the Tars, so he is not in the 23, but it's been all about that man, Masi. Five tries for him in Super Rugby thus far. He is still there in the midfield for the Force. They've also kept things relatively stable and they've had a bit of a locking stock crisis. So they've managed to bring in uh, Sam Carter, who hasn't played in Aussie Rugby for a wee while, but he's back in Australia. He's on the bench for the Force for this one. So good news to see him uh, back in Aussie Rugby after spending a few years in Europe. But the starting 15 is pretty stable. Princep starts this week. Uh, Faifua starts this week. Tizano has maybe been the standout guy. Top tackler of any Aussie team. He is there at number seven. Second of the Saturday games is an all Auckland affair with Moana Pacifica taking on the Blues from Eden Park. It is technically a home game for Moana Pacifica, but being at Eden Park, it's kind of a home game for the Blues. For the Moana boys, they have got the return of Sama Malolo, which is always a bit of good news. You know, I love that guy's attacking runs at the try line from close range. He is there at hooker. Tom Savage also into the 23 uh, in the second row, and Samisi Paya will potentially get his debut for Moana Pacifica if he comes off the bench. Lotto Unisi last week, man, busted like five tackles, had a bunch of run meters from number eight, so be looking for a big game from him. For the Blues, a little bit of rotation and a few milestone games for a couple of the players. Finlay Christie gets his 50th game for the Blues. He's at number nine, and then it's the 100th Super Rugby game for Ricky Riccatelli if he comes off the bench, so big congratulations to him. Zahn Sullivan's uh, PCL six to eight week injury means there's a bit of a needed change at fullback, so it sees Corey Evans gets his first game of the campaign there at fullback, and also Rico Iwane is back there in the number 13 jumper, so good news for the Blues. Also, man, it's weird when you see the Blues kind of ball carrying stats. Most teams' top ball carriers... Uh, loose forwards, but for the Blues, Talia, number one. Perifetta is the Blues' number two guy. If you want to see uh, Stephen Perifetta's kind of uh, we chat kind of about his kind of rugby upbringing and um, some of his insights, he's on NZR Plus, along with a bunch of other guys doing their kind of my take interviews where they talk about a bit of their rugby history. He talked a bit about his uh, ran through the Shield match for Taranaki against the Canterbury boys back in the day. So check that out. NZR Plus down in the description. Heaps of other content there. But yeah, Peter Fetter starting at 10. 
Certainly a bit of good news for the Blues. Uh, penultimate game of the round is the Highlanders taking on the Hurricanes. Highlanders have got a bit of good news with the likes of Ethan DeGroote being back. He's at loose head. Max Hicks is back in the second row. And Jonah Lowe is going to get a start at 13. Remember, Talia uh, got suspended with a red card last week. So they've had to make a change at 13. So Jonah Lowe is going to fill in that spot. And then Rowan Wingham is going to get his Highlanders debut as the kind of reserve tight head prop. So uh, good luck to him. Jermaine Ainsley, unfortunately, is injured for the Highlanders. You'd think the Highlanders are going to need to do some pretty big defending because if you look at a bunch of the attacking stats, the Hurricanes have got a lot of the kind of top performers. Like Billy Harmon is the top defensive player in terms of tackles made who's not a crusader so that kind of at least speaks well to how the highlanders might go for the hurricanes they have made remember they made a bunch of changes last week's game they've also made a bunch of changes for this week's game as well they've got numia starting he wasn't in the 23 last week almoa is starting he was on the bench last week wakalia weta is back in the second row bad shields continues on uh, Peter Lakai is there at number seven. He didn't play last week. Cam Roygaard is back. He didn't play last week. Brett Cameron's back. He didn't play last week. Kenny Naholo, likewise. Billy Proctor, likewise. Ruben Love, likewise. So it is the most kind of wholesale changes we've seen from week to week. It's two weeks in a row now uh, from this Hurricane side. So didn't seem to cost them last week in terms of any loss of cohesion. So we'll see if the kind of same rings true this week. Uh, Pete Umanga Jensen also back on the bench for them. Um, as I mentioned, man, like Morby. Uh, Ruben Love, Cam Regard. If you're looking for things like clean breaks, defenders beaten, those guys have been absolutely all over it. And then the final of the games this week sees the Reds taken on the Brumbies, the top two Aussie side. That's going to be a bit of a ding dong one, you would imagine. Uh, the Reds have seen the welcome return of Jordan Pitaya. He is there on the right wing. Jeff Tumanga Allen, also a familiar one to Kiwi fans. He is there uh, starting at tie head this week after being on the bench for a few weeks. So good on him for getting a start. But I mean, it's pretty stable. Uh, some of these key guys for these Reds, like the loose forwards, like Seru Uru, he's one of the top ball carriers in the entire competition. He's a lock, so that's pretty unusual, but speaks to how these guys are playing. Everyone putting in a bit of shift. And then Matt Fassler is the top equal try scorer, the hooker for the Reds. Who's the other joint equal try scorer? That's Corey Tool, and he plays for the Brumbies. So you've got the top true two try scorers up against each other this week, playing in totally different positions. One's a hooker. One's an outside back, so there you go. Um, for the Brumbies, they've made a few changes in terms of James Slipper getting a start uh, after being on the bench last week. Ryan Lonergan, likewise, he captains the side from number nine. And then uh, on the bench, Billy Pollard drops to the bench. Harry Vella drops to the bench. And uh, Harrison Goddard, likewise. So the core of the squad, uh, pretty stable. 6-2 split, though, for the Brumbies, keeping things relatively stable. But yeah, two games on the Friday four games on the Saturday folks you guys let us know your thoughts how you think things may go can the Crusaders get their first win they are the only winless side thus far which as I said nobody saw coming who's going to win the battle of the 09 between the Blues and Moana Pacifica but yeah you guys let us know your thoughts and um, check out that NZR plus thing a bunch of interviews and other tidbits from some of the top players check it out down in the description take care folks see you later